Welcome back to our Origin Summer Preview. I'm Eric Summer. This is Ralph from Eagle Griffin Games, and we're talking about a new series of games that yeah. we're producing in the near future. Yeah, we're just going to give a very quick overview of it. Uh, we've actually had several of these already on Kickstarter, successfully funded. In fact, four of them will be ready for pre are ready for pre-order, and will be here in less than a month. And then we got a couple others that'll be coming a little later, but okay. I'm going to give you the breeze through of the first eight games uh, so far in the series. I don't have a prototype for number five, okay. but I'll talk about it very briefly also. And the name of the series? Is the Egg Series. Well, since we combined our logo uh, for Eagle Games and Griffin Games, the Eagle, Eagle Griffin, Griffin Games, Games e -G -G. says A Egg, and the new logo kind of conveniently makes a little, a little egg, egg shape. Symbol. All right. So, you know, it's our little way of having fun and, okay. and having a very delightful series. Now these are meant to be small box games. This is a prototype, right. obviously, uh, and so they'll, they're easy to carry around. Uh, they tend to be shorter, uh, easier games. Although the dice game is kind of interesting, so let me just breeze through them very quickly. I'm not going to go into great details, uh, but we'll start with Eggs and Empires. Okay. That was uh, successfully kickstarted last year. is already available, but it will be coming out with the new Egg Series box. Ah. And in this game, everybody has an identical deck, which uh, that's a start player marker. Okay. Nice little. Egg. That's where we got the idea of the series, by the way, is Eggs and Empires and Eagle Griffin Games. Right. So. But you have ten lovely cards that will allow you, uh, you pick randomly, uh, we, you have three to pick from and you choose, everybody chooses at the same time, and then based on what you chose, you'll have to pick up eggs, either bad eggs or good eggs okay. for points. So whoever played the highest card, but there's powers that cancel each other out or make you uh, change things around a little bit. So it's in the spirit of games like Zoom Cook Cook, also known as Turn the Tide, Raj, yeah. uh, but it's a very fun filler. Um, it's been very successful. People are really enjoying this game. So that's the first in the series that uh, kicked it off. And then we can move, and you got nice little markers for an expansion. Mm -hmm. We move to 12 Days of Christmas. Okay. 12 Days of Christmas is by Gord Hamilton, who actually did the next game, King's Kelt. Okay. And this one is in the spirit of Great Dal Moody, where you're shedding cards. And But in this one, it, it's changed around a little bit, but you uh, have the 12 Days of Christmas, so you have 1 1, 2 2s, 3 3s, 4 4s, all the all way up all to 12, all okay. uh, whoops, all, all the way up to 12 12s. Yep. And you can see the lovely art on those mm -hmm. cards. Uh, yep. really I'm singing the song in my head already. All right, exactly. And you're going to get gifts. Uh, so you're trying to get, gifts. and you're trying to get the most gifts. So you play several rounds to see who gets the most gifts. Okay. So that's 12 days of Christmas, and, and that should be coming out in this, time for Christmas, right? Yeah, in time for July. Okay. <laughs> so, Christmas in July. Yes, exactly. So uh, we we thought ahead on that yeah, one. <laughs> then the next one is King's Kilt, and in King's Kilt. This is also by Gord Hamilton. Uh, by the way, Eggs and Empires, Matt Riddle, Ben Pinchback, great friends of ours, and a lot of the games that they've done with us. People really like them a lot. So, King's Kilt, you're now trying to assume the uh, uh, Scottish throne. So basically, you're gonna start out with a bottom row. Oh, well, they're all the same right now, but uh, imagine they're different. So you, That's you, a bloody sword, not a lightsaber. Right, and you're gonna eventually build a pyramid by promoting your lords. Okay. And so, in the pyramid, that'll be the king. He'll be worth three points, two points each for the guardians, and one point each for the nobles. And you ascend by, early on, you have a deck of cards that You'll, you'll say, oh, I'm going to promote that guy, and then you fill in, and you just keep filling in, bringing your nobles up. Okay. But you also have a hand of cards that says, oh, um, I have a card that matches him, so he's going to kill that guy, and now he's going to move up. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's how the whole game works. So you got a hand of five cards for intrigue, and you also have three cards hidden that are your nobles, your clan, that you want to get that to the top. Okay? One of the nice things they did too is there's 14 cards with a different color back. Those are one of each of the eight clans so that you can start with those on top to ensure that all the nobles all will the nobles be in, the, are in there are in there and coming up first. So okay. that makes it a very fair game. Um, we also did something really fun with the Kickstarter on this. There's a lot of extra clans beyond the ones in the base game. So you can, if, you, if you're of uh, the Scottish descent, as I have some Scottish blood in me, okay. uh, then you can find your clan. In fact, the Anderson clan and the Pollock clan are two of mine. Huh. And uh, those are there and several others that were picked. So there are some variety in those. So right. Scottish are very uh, big on ancestry. So, you know, we tried to cater to that as best we could. 
Krakatoa. Okay, we're halfway through. So Krakatoa, this is a game about volcanoes. And this is actually a picture that was done, a watercolor that was done uh, historically during the eruption uh, back in the 1800s oh, wow. of Krakatoa. Krakatoa is simply a dice game. You have a score pad, yep. a very nice huge score pad. And then for making different sets by throwing the dice, you can make points. Now, the thing is, too, you can re-throw dice, you can pick a color set, steam, lava, or ash, and then you th you have to hit another dice and, and change something. So it's, it's a very strategic game of dice throwing. And oh, so you're actually hitting the other dice yeah, to change their value. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, you can toss them like that. I see. Okay? So, a very interesting game, and this is by, and I'm, I want to get his name right, um, Jolie Quentin Con Conch, who uh, was very big, Bridget, uh, you know, Bridget Jr., uh, a lot of bridge, uh, it was a, a two-player bridge game that you could play, he did that. Okay. Uh, he did uh, Six Suit Solitaire. Hmm. So back in the 70s, 80s, I believe it was, he had quite a number of games that he produced and very well regarded. This was one of them, so this is bringing this one back ah. uh, into light, like we've done with a lot of Sid Saxon games. Yeah. So um, something very interesting and different. So that's number four. One, two, three, four. Number five, I don't have. Oh, okay. It's Dexacon. It's a word game, party game. Everybody, it, it's similar to a lot of games like Balderdash or something like that, where you know uh, you put out a card, it has a word on it, and then everybody tries to write words that would link with that, uh, fits that category. Okay. And then you see if you match it, how many matches you make, you get points. Then how many unique words on another round. And then there's also one where there's one word, uh, six words, and you got to want one word for each, and then you see if you match. So, nice little word game. Uh, sixes. That's number six in the line. Actually, actually, I'm sorry. I just described sixes. <laughs> I just described sixes. That's the one with the cards. So you got cards um, with for the lightning round, and you've got cards like that for the okay. for the match or the unmatch. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Well, you described it without even seeing it. That was I know. Well, I spent a lot of time doing rules on these. Believe me. Uh, it has a nice score pad as well. So sixes. That will be out much later this year. These four are all coming in later this month. Okay. Okay. This will be late, later this year. Uh, sevens is also coming in this month. Seven Sevens is a um, Jason Tagmeyer, and uh, basically it's based on the seven uh, seven groups of seven. So you've got lucky gods, you've got deadly sins, oh. uh, you've got the seven um, Ages of Man, oh the Seven boy. Wonders of the World, the Seven Seas. <laughs> Every seven you can come uh, up with. Exactly. And uh, you're, you're having a, you have a hand of three cards, and when you play cards, uh, at the end of the turn you go back up to three, either by a power of one of the cards or by drawing from the top of the deck. But at the end of the game, your points are based on what's left in your hand. So there's a card that cancels the sevens, then the sixes, then the fives if they're played, the Ages of Man. So the more Ages of Man are played, the less value cards there are to, that will count. Hmm. So sevens won't count, then sixes won't count, then fives won't count. But there's ways to pick those back up. And there's also um, color cards that let you play wild uh, if, you match, if it matches the current color. Uh, so a lot of different ways that are all described very neatly on the cards themselves and on your little handout so that you can juxtapose what you're doing to try and make sure you end up with the best card count. Right. So, and it's out when one stack reaches seven, of course. Okay? okay. So when all seven cards of one type are played, yep. uh, game over. So, this is the lightning round here. Okay. So, number eight. So that was number seven, of course. Yep, of course. And number eight is a, our friends again, uh, Matt and Ben. Ah. Uh, this is Wharfside, which is, what do you do when the fleet comes home? You're gonna have to undock them on the uh, at home, and it's a card game, and it plays similarly, but as a card, uh, as a more simple card game, because you have contracts that you're trying to fulfill, and of course you have um, a lot of similar things to the game, except it, it plays in a much quicker fashion as a card game. Let me, similar to Fleet, you're saying? Yes, similar the, to the, Fleet. The big brother. So you got you got some victory point cards. You've got your different kinds of uh, ships and you've got your different kinds of fish. So you're trying to collect boats and fish and bring them to the wharf side so that you can buy contracts. And then the contracts might also get you some victory points. 
So some of the con, where are the con, oh here. Um, one victory point uh, on your completed contract. So this, this makes other contracts better. So, you know, there's various things, but it's, um, again, this is a, a prototype, obviously, nice cards, but uh, the box, <laughs> not so much. That. Still working on that. But this one will be on Kickstarter later. Okay. Uh, Dex, uh, all the rest of these have completed Kickstarter successfully, and um, we will we'll have more in the box. In fact, we just found a card game someone sent in to us called Elevenses. Ah. So it's going to at least go up to 11. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All well, right. Thank you, Ralph. The new Egg series coming very soon from Eagle Griffin Games. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.